Good afternoon, everybody, and thanks very much for uh, dialing in. As Tyler just said, I'm Steve Mogford, um, Chief Executive of United Utilities. And I've got with me today on the call Ross Holden, our Chief Financial Officer, Louise Beardmore, our Customer Services and People Director, and James Bullock, our Strategy and Regulation Director. Um, earlier today, as you know, we announced that we've accepted the PR19 final determination and confirmed that United Utilities Group PLC dividend policy for AMP7. Uh, this call today is to give you opportunity to ask questions following this morning's announcement. However, first, I'll just give you a brief overview. Um, the team here today, along with colleagues throughout the organisation, have been instrumental uh, in delivering the operational transformation we've achieved in AMP6, and our recognised approach to innovation has been key to this, and it will be fundamental in helping us meet our targets in AMP7. Having made our detail assess detailed assessment of the final determination and recognising the interests of all stakeholders, the Board has announced its intention to maintain the dividend per share as we exit AMP6 and to grow this in line with CPIH through AMP7. Uh, today's announcement represents the final stage of the PR19 process for us and we now look forward to delivering against our plans for AMP7 and these provide further service improvements for customers, lower bills, investment to improve the resilience of the region's water infrastructure and a continuation of our responsible approach to financing and pensions. And all of this is underpinned by a robust and sustainable capital structure. We've already made good use of the additional time and clarity that achieving fast track status has afforded and we're hitting the ground running even before we start AMP7. So I'd now like to invite questions. If you could uh, say who you are as you do that, please. Thank you, Steve. Ladies and gentlemen, as a reminder, if you'd like to ask a question today, please press star one on your telephone keypad now. Your first question today comes from James Brand of Butcher Bank. James, your line is open. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, and uh, congratulations on uh, maintaining the uh, dividends. Had a couple of questions. I'm not sure you necessarily want to, necessarily want to answer um, them at the moment, but I just thought I'd um, try just in case you're willing to share some some context. Uh, the first is on the um, payout uh, uh, ratio, the IFRS payout ratio. It looks, uh, at least on my modelling, very comfortable in the first year and less comfortable in, in, in years as you get to the end of the regulatory period. Um, uh, do you think that the dividend uh, per share is covered by earnings throughout the period? Um, and uh, does it matter if it is, or is it more about the balance sheet? Uh, and the second question is just on the balance sheet. Uh, also, my kind of estimates, you de-gear, uh, at least um, in terms of net debt to RAB, as you go through uh, the period, but remain comfortably within the, the target leverage uh, range that you you set out, and I was just wondering whether you're able to say whether you that was also your projections that you de gear over the period, and um, whether you're comfortable with that. Whether, whether investors should maybe anticipate uh, that if you do de gear, that you might you, you could think about special dividends or or, um, or additional distributions. Thanks. Okay. Um, thanks, James. I think. Um uh, you, you're correct in the sense that what we do when we look at dividends is we look at over the five-year period because obviously um, the settlement itself is a five-year one. It is true to say that um, we've, we've, uh, we're stronger in cover over the first few years um, and essentially a function of that is, uh, is the fact that we pulled forward revenue um, through the use of the CPH mechanism to get um, a softer landing into the uh, beginning of AMP7. So yeah, you're right, we do get we do get thinner, but we're satisfied with the level of cover across the five-year period as an average. Um, in terms of balance sheet to gearing, I think, again, you're correct, but Russ, do you want to pick up on that? Yeah, I think, James, um, you're, you're right to say that we will probably marginally de -gear, but we're going to be well within the 55 to 65% range. So I wouldn't expect that we'd need to do anything like you were suggesting in terms of special dividends or any other adjustment mechanisms. Great, thank you.
The next question comes from Deepa Venkasparun from Bernstein. Deepa, please go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, so my question was uh, really about the uh, <clears throat> assumptions uh, that you've made on the outperformance. Uh, so I read in the in the press release that uh, you are trying to use the outperformance in the last two amps. Is that something that you've discussed with Offort and you're okay? And is the amount or the balance in this around 250 or 300 million? Uh, wanted to check that. And then on top of it, have you assumed any sort of outperformance uh, that you will be already making in the current AMP from financials or ODI or Tortex, and just an idea if there's any uncertainty or anything we should be wary of in case uh, those those performance uh, measures don't come through. Thank you. Um, I think firstly in terms of uh, uh, the assumptions that we've used in terms of um, the outperformance dividend that's coming through from AMP6 principally is um, essentially what we've done there um, is looked at the outperformance that we have effectively earned through AMP6 um, and that has yet to be paid up to group um, from water. Um, we've looked at that in the context of its post-sharing with customers, so I think you're aware that we've already um, consumed um, 250 million plus another 100 million of um, uh, fast start money for AMP7. So essentially, um, the payment that we would pay up to group um, is post uh, customer sharing. Um, but essentially, we're satisfied with the level that we're doing because I think when you look at uh, AMP7, we've got a low, lower capital demand because we've got a smaller uh, capital program than we've had in, in previous AMPs. Um, and we've got a, a strong balance sheet. So I think as far as we're concerned, we're satisfied with the ability to uh, essentially use the outperformance in uh, in AMP7 to sustain dividend. I think um, in terms of outperformance going forward, I think we've said to you consistently throughout the period, um, we're not really we're not talking about absolute levels of outperformance at the moment in terms of our targets and expectations. I think we'd like to get a little way into the AMP as we did last time before we we start putting numbers on it. But but certainly. Um, as far as our performance is concerned, we are in a position where we believe that there is opportunity to outperform. If you look at the mix of ODIs we have, some are very tough, uh, some that we, uh, if we go for it, we think there's an opportunity to outperform. So I think across the board, again, we do we do expect to see outperformance as a contribution. Um, and I think in looking at that, um, we see that as uh, as also an opportunity to uh, build our resilience um, as we approach AMP8 in the same way as we've done in AMP6 and giving ourselves resilience by the time we get to the next um, final determination positioning. Uh, can you just clarify how much of the past outperformance uh, is, is the balance that, that you can still distribute? Um, we haven't declared that, but you'll see it in the UW accounts when they come out later this year. Okay, thank you. Dominic Nash of Barclays will be your next question. Dominic, please go ahead. Hi there. Um, well done. Um, two questions, please. Um, first, if you just remind me um, how much uh, non-appointed assets and profit do you do you have? And you're saying that you're going to pay out um, profits from those into your into your dividend. Is, is that meaning that you're um, not going to be retaining any earnings there for sort of future growth. Uh, and secondly, just a sort of more general one, on, on the targets that you've got in the, in the final determination, when you went through your, your plans internally, are there any individual targets that you looked at that you think are particularly onerous and something that uh, our planners should, and, and you as a management team should focus on more than, than any others? Okay. Do, uh, do you want to do the non-appointed asset one, Russ? The non appointed is pretty small, isn't it? Um, about five, five to ten million, something like that, in terms of profit. So uh, it's not a major contribution. I think uh, uh, the main thing is the regulated business, where we would expect to achieve the targets, and as uh, Steve said, our aim would be to outperform them. Yeah, I think um, Dominic, we're about as pure play as you can get, really, in terms of um, regulated. We've got. Uh, 
sort of JVs and we've got our um, energy activity, but it's, it's tiny in terms of the size. I think in terms of targets, um, uh, we saw coming out in FD some adjustments to the targets. So, for example, I think you, you remember that we went in with, um, uh, with a 20% target on leakage. That's been reduced to, to 15%. So, you know, we're reasonably um, happy with that situation. I think it puts us in line with the rest of the sector. Um, some of the other targets in other areas uh, came down uh, from an FD perspective. Um, so in things like um, supply interruptions, um, which brought the, the target much closer to our actual performance. So I think, again, you know, we can see some, uh, some upsides in the FD coming through. The one area that um, I think, again, we saw an improvement in FD, but is still quite a challenge for us in the nature of our region, is uh, sewer flooding. Um, so, you know, we've, we've long been um, uh, an outlier on sewer flooding in the sector, and that's an area where um, we've got plans for very significant improvement as we go through HAMP uh, 7, and it's where we spent some of our um, 100 million of uh, early start money uh, in order to get a lead on that. So I think that's that's an area for us, but you know there are other areas of uh, opportunity. So I think it's probably fair to say when you look across the board, you know there are some there are some tough asks, and there are uh, some um, some easier ones from us. So I think it's probably true of, of everybody when you look across the sector. In that none of us is a is a leader on everything, and there's some areas where are tough for us. Sewer flooding is one of them. Um, if you want to keep your eye on that going forward, that's one to keep your eye on. But there are others where we've got opportunities. Probably worth saying in terms of those opportunities and impact to deeper dive on ODIs generally, it will be a topic for the Capital Markets Day. Yeah. So uh, look at, watch this space uh, on that, Dominic. It's an area, Dominic, where um, you might um, think we are applying quite a lot of effort around um, system thinking and innovation to uh, to address those areas. So, But Mark, Capital Markets Day will be an opportunity to go into that in more detail. Great, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as a reminder, to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. And the next question today, Steve, comes from Martin Young of Investec. Martin, please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good afternoon to everybody. Just a quick one from me. I just wanted to sort of uh, pick up on your last point around the Capital Markets Day, and obviously you've alluded to talking about ODIs at that event. Previously in today's call, you kind of gave us the impression that uh, anything about outperformance might be sort of you know, further down the line. So when we think ahead to March and you're talking about ODIs, is it very much going to be scene setting or will we actually get some indication from you as to where you might uh, be in reward territory and where you might be in penalty territory? Thanks. I think um, what you could uh, expect to see when we get to Capital Markets Day is probably a, an understanding of you know where we are um, in terms of current performance, you know what the targets are for the ODIs and the sort of things, some of the things that we're doing effectively in terms of uh, drivers of performance as we go through. So, um, so I think when you when you get to March, will we give you hard numbers for expectation for the for the AMP? Um, I don't think so. I very much doubt that. I think I'd be surprised if anybody does. But what we can do is give you a better perspective on uh, where the opportunities and challenges lie against the ODIs for us and where we currently stand, so that you can get a sense of um, of what we're what we're doing. Okay. Thank you. Jenny Ping from Citigroup. This is your next question today. Jenny, please go ahead. Hi, thank you. Uh, just one question from me. Um, what was the final decision, if you've made one, on the uh, deferred tax inclusion within your uh, EPS numbers, uh, just in the context of uh, looking at payout, but also some investors, especially those in the uh, other side of the pond, tend to look at PE, and I just wondered where, where you are on that decision. Thanks. 
Yeah, um, we said that we were going to wait for the final determination. We said we we're going to wait to see the progress of the rate regulated activities project through the um, IASB. Uh, we've obviously not, now got the final determination. The rate regulated activities project to the ISB was due to uh, produce a, an exposure draft in the first half of this year, but it looks like it's probably slipping to the second half. It's clear to us, because of our involvement in that project, that this deferred tax issue would effectively be addressed by rate regulated activities accounting, as with a number of other factors, and therefore it would seem to us to be a sensible stepping stone towards rate regulated activities to move to make the same adjustment that Seven Trent and Pennon have made. Okay, perfect, thanks. And next up, we have Verity Mitchell from HSBC. Verity, please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm just curious a bit about your approach to leakage. And um, clearly, you were given a really tough target at the draft determination. So, um, did you start to do work on the premise that you would have an even tougher target that, than you have now? And therefore, are you slightly relieved and uh, feel much more confident about your leakage targets? Uh, thanks, Verity. I think, yes, you're right. Um, when we kicked off our uh, early start investment, uh, we were doing that against the 20% leakage target. Um, I think probably we were surprised when it came in at 15 in, in the FD, but we sort of understand off what's rationale for that. I think, um, I think uh, it's still pretty tough. Um, and I think it's a steep profile in terms of the change, particularly as you uh, get to the back end. So I think that early start money for us was, was money well spent. And, uh, and yes, um, tough, but um, uh, an easier target if you, if you look at that. I mean, the truth of the matter is we'll do as much as we can um, because I don't think this is, a, this is a topic that's going to go away for the sector. Um, so it's a very emo emotive issue. And I think the, the journey that everybody's going on is just the beginning, quite honestly, over a number of amps. But if we exceed 15%, then we're into reward territory. Thanks. As a final reminder to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Okay, Steve, it appears Verity was the final question, so I'll hand back for any closing remarks. Okay, so um, thanks very much. Um, thank you very much for coming on the call. I think we're delighted to be where we are. <laughs> delighted to um, now be at the end of, uh, of the process and have a, a very clear view ahead of us of uh, both the targets and the opportunities. I think Capital Markets Day, for those of you who might not have uh, picked up on it, is the 2nd of March. Um, so I look forward to seeing you there for those of you that can attend. Thanks very much. Good afternoon.